वेलकम टू अ डे इन माय लाइफ and welcome to sugar spice nice my name is shweta and welcome to a day in my life the day is starting a little bit later but i thought i'll take you guys through a little bit more interesting part of the day so right now i am actually heading for lunch and i've come to this cafe called gare monje cafe i just hope i'm pronouncing it uh, correctly the cafe actually has an outdoor and an indoor seating and the outdoor is nice but i don't think this is like the perfect weather to sit outside but i just thought i'll show you guys what it looks like Wow, inside feels so much more nicer, and it's so pretty. I love a place with like white and brown accents, and I think I find a really nice table here. So I'm checking out their menu, and it's looking pretty interesting. There's a whole bunch of smoothies, soups, salads, burgers, pizza. Even maybe I'll try a pizza later. But I think for now, I'm going to start with maybe a salad. Let's just ease into the indulgence, you know. The first salad that I'm trying here is a black rice salad. So you guys have to see how colorful, how vibrant it looks. And there's of course black rice in it, and there are peppers, there's cherry tomatoes, there's caramelized walnuts, and that is something that I absolutely love in a salad. There's some greens and there's purple cabbage. Let's just go into the first bite. Mm. I think this is probably my introduction to black rice. I don't think I've tried it too much in the past, but this is a good way of having it. There's very very little. It's almost like a bit of a garnish. I think there's much more vegetables. There's much more greens. And overall, I think I'm enjoying that crunchy feeling of the veggies the most here. The dressing is really mild, not too heavy, not too overpowering. It's letting me enjoy the flavor from the veggies itself. I just ended up having a piece of that walnut. It is exactly what I'm living for. Walnut. in a salad are extremely underrated especially caramelized ones this is the mediterranean and avocado salad and i have to say it's the most unique looking salad presentation i've seen in a while you know they've kind of piled up everything together and it looks very interesting to be honest it tastes even more interesting than it looks it's a complete play on textures the creaminess from the avocado the crunchiness from the mediterranean ingredients and the veggies and the dressing so there's i think a whole lot of pepper in this which is honestly feeling amazing for somebody like me who's almost constantly struggling with a sore throat or a cold or a cough pepper is god sent being very honest with you guys neither does it look like neither does it feel like a salad it feels like an indulgent appetizer or a side dish in terms of ingredients you can see a lot of lettuce in fact i can see like two or three different kinds of lettuce and inside i told you guys that there's like an entire mediterranean veggies which are really finely chopped there's zucchini i think there's peppers probably there's a bit of tomato as well here you can see the avocado slices and it's topped with a little bit of olives some walnuts these are not the caramelized ones but they do feel really good and on the side there are microgreens which of course add to the flavor of every bite The next thing that I'm trying here is a smoothie. Mango season is upon us and I cannot wait to indulge more in mangoes, but this is something new for me. It's a mango coconut and basil smoothie. This is looking like super thick. Let's just have a sip. Mm. It's feeling much lighter than a regular mango smoothie or a mango shake. The coconut flavor is not very overpowering, which is what I love. There's like a hint of basil, but more than basil, I'm actually feeling a hint of mint as well. Mm. Wow. Honestly, this is feeling like dessert in a glass. Trying another one of your smoothie. This is the berry and avocado smoothie. I expect this to be supremely creamy. Wow. The flavor of berries is just so prominent and you can definitely feel like it's a little bit heavy and very very creamy. So because I enjoyed black rice i thought of trying out one of your specialty dish which is black rice balls these look interesting 
wow it's actually like a rice ball with a little bit of i don't think stuffing is the right word but a little something inside let's try it there's a little bit of a crunch from probably peppers or zucchini and the rest of the thing inside is really soft and creamy not mushy but more creamy i don't have had anything like this before whether it's ingredients like black rice or the texture okay if i were to explain it to you in the most simple language it's like rice you put something inside like probably a veggie mix with something creamy and you've mashed it together formed a ball and you've steamed it together that's how i can explain it maybe the next one i'm going to try with the sauce it's seeming like a sweet chili sauce maybe on its own it's got a very neutral flavor more texture but with the sauce that slightly sweet and that hint of spicy flavor comes in more sweet actually this is pasta but it's no ordinary pasta it's zucchini pasta zucchini noodles zoodles are probably a little bit more manageable but here when you are seeing like the actual texture and the color and everything of zucchini itself i think this is going to be tough for me to have but this is like a first in my life of ever trying zucchini pasta i honestly don't feel like trying it but uh, this is part of their menu which they would like me to try so i'm trying it so there's green and yellow zucchini feeling like i'm having only the pasta sauce there's no spaghetti inside because these veggies you know they're feeling like just a little bit of veggies that you add in pasta it's giving me that satisfaction of eating a pasta but not completely i don't think i have evolved enough to enjoy zucchini pasta but having said that this is really good it's really thinly sliced so it doesn't feel like a task to chew and also because it's so thin it takes on to the sauce really nicely but i have to say i am really enjoying the sauce there's one more thing which is looking super interesting it's this garlic bread it's feeling like a multi grain or a whole grain bread or a garlic on top there's also a lot of cheese the sauce in itself is actually exceptional it is so so creamy and it's just got the right kind of seasoning enough herbs the little bit of tanginess All right now I'm going to be trying their pizza. The first thing that I've selected in my pizza is the base of the pizza. So you can see it's really nice and thin and this is actually a ragi base. And this one if you see it will look like a pizza with meat on it. This is actually a vegetarian version of a bolognese. This is plant based minced meat. It's probably made of some form of vegetable or grain or something. This is something which a lot of the non-vegetarian uh, people swear by here please that's what i've heard so in case you're looking for mock meat that is also an option here and honestly i don't know if i should be even trying this or no because i don't know what meat tastes like maybe a little bit for me this is one with a very interesting topping let me move on to the pizza that i absolutely love trying anywhere in fact i judge a place for their pizza by this one the margarita what is interesting in this pizza is the sauce really tangy and the fact that they've added a few more cherry tomatoes on top that's just adding to that sweet and sour tomato flavor and the base of the pizza is quite interesting it's filling but at the same time it's not got that heaviness of a regular pizza and i actually have a video that i had filmed sometime during the lockdown i think where i tried out different gluten free and vegan pizza bases so i'm going to leave a link of that video in the description box below to check it out They brought me one more dish to try which is the Jowar pita pockets. The filling looks very very interesting. I think it's hummus, this falafel inside and a little bit of pickled uh, onion and this is gluten free. So the covering is Jowar. Essentially it's a pita bread pocket but made with Jowar. Mm. It's kind of feeling like a mix of different Middle Eastern dips. I don't know whether that's tahini or what but I'm feeling that kind of flavor. It's very very light. It's perfect for a summery afternoon honestly. There's a lot of vegetables inside. A little bit of falafel pockets are lined with hummus. I'm not sure if the upper sauce is yogurt based or no but it's got that beautiful sour light refreshing feel and texture. But right now I'm trying something from their seasonal mango special menu. So this is the mango panna cotta. This is an all vegetarian version. So panna cotta usually I think has eggs and gelatin if I'm not wrong. But this one is all veg, and they can even make it vegan if you request for it. But let's just try one bite. It's feeling like you know mango jelly, but like more wholesome. It's not completely sweet. Like it's got that little bit of the sourness of the mango, but it's really nicely. Form. It's a very very satisfying dessert, but a very light one at that. Like that's what I love about. 
about fruit based desserts they give you that complete fulfilling feel of indulging in a dessert but at the same time they are relatively lighter than milk based ones this part is almost feeling like amras good coffee i usually go in for cappuccino but today i'm having mocha because i'm sharing it with the person who I'm having lunch with. One really important thing here, they actually have all of their coffee grounds. They actually give you the option of packing these up in a small uh, container and taking that with you. Use it as a face scrub, as a body treatment, or put it in your face mask even. I think I'm going to be taking this back and we'll probably do a coffee mask later at night. This is a very unique way of having a more sustainable approach to coffee. Another way in which they're trying to be environmentally conscious is by having dinnerware and serving wear with which is biodegradable and all of the food that came in here was in these kind of bowls. One amazing thing about these bowls is that they're so easy to pack up any leftover food. They just add a lid on top and boom, that's your takeaway parcel ready. I think this one stands out because it has a lot more vegan gluten-free options. I think pricing wise, it's probably slightly lesser as compared to the other uh, fancy or bandra cafes. I've liked this place for a while. They have an outlet in Villepale as well, where I've been many, many years ago. I got to try so many different things here today. And that's kind of thanks to my job. If I like something, I can share it with you guys. I can show you more stuff that I like. Because I've eaten so much, my next stop for today is Santa Cruz Market. I've actually been wanting to go to that Santa Cruz Market for a long time so let's go so this finally is Santa Cruz Market. I'll leave like the exact map location and address and stuff in the description box below. So Santa Cruz Market is like most markets that are outside stations in Mumbai. If I compare it to any other station, I feel like this one is one of the bigger ones. The place is lively, especially in the early afternoon and evening time. And on weekends, there is literally no place to stand here. You'll find everything here. And by everything, I literally mean everything. Right from things like fruits and vegetables, to general stores, bridal shopping, to jewellery stores, regular wear clothes, bags, shoes, accessories. This market has it all. But according to me, this market is especially famous for wedding shopping, occasion wear shopping and even bridal shopping. There are a lot of stores here where you'll get things like lehengas and the heavier saris and stuff. Places like Seasons, Friendships, Sakhi. Then there are a lot of shops for jewellery. So right from the heavier bridal sets, to the more dainty everyday wear jewellery. There's one jewellery shop called Silver Plaza that I have been visiting since many many years. Anybody who's been in Mumbai, shopped at this market will definitely know of this shop. And they are famous as the name suggests for their silver jewellery. Earlier they used to have more of the pure silver and you know that typical oxidized jewellery. They would have good quality designs of that. But now they have more everyday dainty fashion jewellery as well. I've actually been looking for a silver tone bracelet. So that's what I started seeing. And they showed me some really pretty designs like this kada of sorts. It's not really a kada but it's more like a bangle. And then I saw the more delicate ones as well. And then there was this one with these like one string of pearls and one plain string which I really really liked. So this bracelet cost $13.50 and I feel like the quality is good. It's a little bit pricey but I think their stuff somehow I vouch for the quality. You know how it is when you're in a jewellery store, right? You see one thing and then you want to look at 10 others. So that's exactly what happened to me here. The next thing that I asked to see was earrings. Now I've been looking for slightly longer studded dangling earrings or uh, Bali. So I tried two or three different designs. And then there's one Bali that I really like with these baguette placements. But I don't know, I wasn't too sure. I actually wanted to see another design like a diamond Bali along with a dangler. But they didn't have that. But then I found something for my second piercing. This really tiny little Bali with a heart stud. And the minute I saw it, I was like, I want it. This was so, so cute. This one cost 575 rupees. But I can definitely feel like the quality and all is good. And they actually said that they're giving me a warranty for it and if it goes bad like if the studs fall off or something they'll replace it so I'll hold them accountable if that happens. Now when you're in Santa Cruz you cannot not come to Sanvisa. Its new name is Sanvisa but I think earlier it used to be called something else. If you guys know then let me know in the comments below because I cannot remember right now. And this is a place that has literally grown from a sandwich stall to a uh, Make in India brand. It's got outlets all across the city today and their sandwich is mind-blowing. 
So here you can see them making so many different types of sandwiches. They are very organized. Like there is one counter which is only doing sada sandwich. Then there is another counter which is uh, dealing with grilled sandwiches. Then there is a third counter which is dealing with toast. And their toast options are not just like veg toast. Aloo masala, cheese masala, some other spicy masala. They have it all. As you can see this place is crowded. It's busy. It's buzzing. And all of that just for a good bite of sandwich. <laughs> Now today I'm having the sada sandwich. I've eaten so much during lunch and after that I did walk around. I'm sharing a sandwich. I think the main hero of the sandwich is the chutney. The chutney is mind blowing. It is spicy but it's something that adds all of the flavor to the sandwich. And also the fact that they put so much chaat masala is too good. The cost of the sandwich is 70 rupees. Sandwich without aloo ka piece is incomplete. Hello from Juhu Beach. This day is turning out to be like one that I've not had in a very long time because the amount of different places that I'm visiting literally in the spur of the moment is just feeling wow. And right now I thought I need to really catch a good sunset today. So I thought of coming to Juhu Beach and strangely it is like the middle of the week. It's a Thursday today but the beach is packed. I don't think it's any public holiday but it's still really really crowded. The craze for sunset here in Mumbai is really really big right so that's what i'm going to be doing enjoying a little bit of the sand a little bit of the waves and also beautiful golden hour so it actually looks like they've started water sports here as well i don't think i've seen this before or maybe i've missed let me know if you guys have seen this before but i think for me adventure sports right here at juhu beach is a new thing so i've come to the beach but since it was in such a spur of the moment I'm not wearing the right footwear so I don't really want to get my feet wet but still enjoying this breeze is like a completely different feeling. I think I need to do this a bit more often, get out within the city itself and explore. So now it's evening and we have to make a pit stop for chai because life without chai is pretty deal. So whenever I'm with my friends or with my family and we're out, I try and locate the nearest chaios and go and have a cup of tea there. And there's a particular way in which that I end up getting the tea ordered over there. So you can customize it to the extent of ordering uh, kadak patti or regular patti, the amount of milk that you want in that kam dood, zyada dood. So I usually ask for kam dood and then there are add-ons. So you can choose things from adrak like ginger, masala, elaichi and various other things. So I usually choose ginger and uh, masala. This one kettle costs 209 rupees and it's enough for two people. This feels good. So this particular chaios is in Juhu right next to Shivsagar. It's a very nicely made outlet. Like I feel like it's better than a few others that I've been to. The tea is good so that's always a good thing. So not just for hanging out, chaios is a place I also so sometimes work out of. Many a times me and my team member are getting together for some discussion or some edit related stuff and we'll sit at a chaios to try and catch up on work. It's a good place to you know put your mind on something. Good office away from home I guess. It's time to head out from Juhu but before that I thought I'll just share with you guys what kind of shopping that you can do in Juhu. Now this is a whole street full of designer stores. There are independent individual designers and there are bigger fashion labels and so many of them have their outlets here in Juhu. And to be honest a lot of them are in the high end price range category but you will find designers which are in the more affordable mid range category as well. If not designers you'll find independent stores catering to all price range. This is another place for wedding shopping. I cannot believe I've shared two wedding shopping kind of places with you guys in this vlog. If you are looking for that kind of shopping, then this is yet another spot. After that, I decided to head to food hall. Now, this is one of the biggest food halls that there is in Mumbai. I think this particular one, they've kind of made it like an experience store. But from what I hear, it is shutting down and they're moving. So I just thought I'll pay one last visit. It's not like I needed to buy anything, but I was just literally browsing the aisles. You know, the feeling of satisfaction and I don't know it's almost relaxing to some extent to go browse 
browsing in supermarket aisles. It's something that I really, really enjoy doing. I don't know if you guys do. Let me know if you do so that I can feel a little bit normal about myself. This store is really like an experience store. This is the ground level and you can see the different kinds of things that are there. A lot of their shelves are empty because I told you guys they're emptying out the store and moving. Now I'm going to be taking you guys to the first floor where they have even more experience driven things. So they have an entire chocolate section. So these are all international chocolates. Some of them were interesting. Like I saw variants of Skittles which I've never seen ever before. Then I saw this after eight which is like a weakness but promise myself I'm not going to end up buying any nonsense. They also have another chocolate section where they kind of customize to individual chocolate preferences. These are like chocolate thins customized with your preference of nuts whether you like hazelnuts, almonds and they do it in variants of dark chocolate, milk chocolate, whatever you like. They have an exclusive tea, not section, like a tea experience as well. They also have a Casey Roasters coffee outlet inside the store as well. On the second floor actually there is a restaurant called Sorrentina and this restaurant god knows has been on my wish list for so long but for some reason I haven't been able to make it there so I thought maybe today I can try to pay a visit but the place was supposedly all booked up so I could not indulge in anything over here. On the way back I couldn't stop myself and I ended up buying a strawberry soda. I know I shouldn't have even when I was paying for it I shouldn't have but you know sometimes the tongue wants what it wants and honestly it was just the curiosity of a strawberry soda but this was a complete new for me so I thought let's try it. Hello, we're back home. After all of that roaming around outside, I thought it's time to get back home and chill for a bit and continue sharing the rest of my day with you guys. So right now what I'm having is a turmeric and pepper tea and it's got like the tiniest bit of ghee in it. So this I find that really helps soothe my throat and keep my immunity in check. At least since the time I've started having this, I feel like I have more energy. Also, my frequency of allergies is uh, much lesser. The way I make it is really simple. In about a cup of water, I add a pinch of turmeric and even lesser than a pinch of black pepper and I let that boil. And once it's boiled enough, I turn off the gas and I add a little bit of ghee in it. Ghee, I find, uh, just helps keep my digestion in check and it also soothes out any throat irritation that I may have. And then I drink a mug full of this. I have to tell you the flavor does take a bit of getting used to. I think I enjoy the warmth and I enjoy the benefits way more. I also came back and caught up on some work. Today was a whole day outside and morning I didn't have enough time to like get some stuff done. So after coming back home, I managed to get those out of my way. And now I think I'm going to call it a night soon. But before that, I really want to use those coffee grounds in like a little bit of a skincare routine. And since I've been out all day in the sun, I think my skin could do with some TLC. I'm just going to get that coffee into like a scrub or a mask and uh, tell you guys how my skin felt after for that. So that was my little coffee driven self care moment and I think coffee has that amazing ability to instantly wake up the skin and not only that I feel like my skin is also feeling softer. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera but in person I can definitely feel that difference. So note to self gotta be using more coffee in skincare. I think I'm gonna call it a night and I hope you guys enjoyed this day in my life. If you did then you know what you have to do hit that like button share this video with all of your friends and family who you think will find this helpful. And also subscribe to my channel for more such vlogs and definitely let me know in the comments if you would like to see more such impromptu days of my life. That is really it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!